first question for me is, uh, I mean, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Oh, man, uh, finally, finally really good. Um, I've been really quiet about what's been on with, uh, going on with me. I had uh, a hip resurfacing surgery in September, and um, the surgery went really well. I had it done in New York. Um, got home. I was posting some stuff on Instagram. Three and a half weeks after surgery, I was walking mile over a mile, things would come along good. Then I got a fever and uh, found out that uh, I had a surgical infection, which is, I guess, the more I find out about these metal implants and stuff like that, it's quite high. high. I mean, it's a, there's a high probability with it. Um, I just got the unlucky draw. Um, the hospital I had it done in New York is uh, one of the top in the world for the least uh, amount of surgical infections. Like, if you're going to get it done, you know, unless you get it done in heaven's waiting room, that's probably the only place that it would be uh, a less likely chance. And um, so we had to deal with that. You know, they had to go back in, cut me back open, take the joint apart, um, clean it, flush it. Um, uh, it's a really bad thing because right now I just have a resurfacing. If the infection had stayed or gotten any worse, um, they'd have to cut the metal pieces out, put in what they call a cement joint, which is a um, uh, antibiotic-friendly joint to the body uh, so the antibiotics can work um, for three months then take that joint out and then do a full hip replacement, which would have severely limited and pretty much ended uh, my wrestling career if that would have happened. Um, so instead, we did a very aggressive cleaning uh, down here in Miami. Some great doctors over here at the um, uh, doctor's Hospital, some of the guys that work for the Dolphins, Dr. Alvarado, um, uh, Dr. Swartzen. Dr. Swartzen's my main orthopedic doctor down here. <clears throat> he worked with uh, Dr. Sue in New York and uh, Dr. Chris Amen, uh, WWE doctor. Everybody was on board because it's just pretty aggressive therapy. I got a thing called a pick line, which was a, basically an IV line that went in my left arm and went to my heart. And for seven weeks, I was walking around with an IV bag. Um, three times a day, basically every eight hours. It took three hours to dispense the meds. <clears throat> I had uh, another medication. That was vancomycin, and I was on another medication called cefepine. So for seven weeks, um, I, at all times of the hours, you know, I had I used to call them feedings. I'd have feedings <laughs> at like 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. because the different medications had their time. So. It was almost like having a small baby in the house because you'd only get three or four hours of sleep or three or four hours to do anything before you had to, you know, feed the baby, change the diaper, that kind of thing. But instead of a quick deal like you do with a kid, this would take two or three hours. So wow. it was very stressful, and, and it was a tough time for me because I couldn't go to the gym like I wanted to because I had this line going into my heart for crying out loud. Um, you couldn't get your blood pressure up too high. You couldn't get too active because, you know, it's it, it's – you can't do that with something going to your heart. So uh, it was very difficult. We finally uh, pulled the pick line out January 2nd. Wow. Um, and things right now are looking really good. This will be touch and go probably for another six to eight months to make sure that it doesn't come back. Because the more I've learned about infections, they're very aggressive, almost uh, sentient diseases, the way they react to certain antibiotics. They retreat, they'll hide. Um, the main thing we try to do is make sure it doesn't get on the metal device itself because once the bacteria gets on the device, you can't get rid of it. Um, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, there's no way for antibiotics to get to it because I've learned a lot. Like I always thought our bodies were just skin with a bunch of blood floating around in it. And I've gotten a lesson in biology too, that, you know, the blood goes through the veins and the capillaries and it disperses, but it doesn't float around freely, if that makes any sense. Everything is contained. So there's no way to really get the antibiotic to the joint. And we've already done the opening it up and put vancomycin pellets around it. And all. We've done everything we can to keep the joint clean. And um, um, so far, we can sit down. I mean, my Benson's back up. My strength's back up. I dropped 20, it was 27 pounds since January 2nd, already back in the gym. So I'm back to, to feeling strong and feeling um, I'm feeling right. Like, even after my surgery in New York, I was kind of tired. I was working out hard, but I was like, man, you know, I just I feel like, you know how you feel, Mark, when you have that jet lag, like from Europe, you come home, and you're, you're okay, but you're just like, your head's like three feet off to the side of you. you yeah, know, you, just, you just have to sit down and rest, and then you wake up, and then you feel like you never even went to sleep. 
Right. Well, that's what I was going on with me. And I, was, I just thought it was maybe trying to get over the anesthesia or whatever it was. But no, it was my body trying to fight the infection. And then when the fever came on and the swelling, well, they put two and two together. So, well, I'm glad uh, you was able to lose 27 pounds because I know your wife is a chef and she was cooking everything, I bet, while you was home off. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I was sick. When I was sick, the, uh, the main thing was, uh, you know, the doctors didn't want me to try it. Because I was saying, oh, I'll cut calories, I'll do this. I'm like, no, you need to eat to feed yourself because you're in a battle right now. So, yeah, I put on a little bit of weight. I did. But uh, we're peeling it back off now. And, then, uh, you know, we play with some different nutritional plans and uh, try some different things. that have had some tremendous results. Um, so, you know, I'm learning more about what nutrition works for me and stuff like that. And, and I found a couple of nice little surprises that I'll, uh, I'll share down the road. Right now, I'm still working on it. But, uh yeah, it is you know, real positive, though. Thank God. I mean, um, you're looking at, you know, uh, everything being taken away from you career-wise and everything. And not that my problems are that big a deal. I mean, hey, we all have our personal battles to go through. And there's a lot of people out there that have a lot worse problems than I do. But for me, this is a this was a hurdle that God put in front of me, and I was able to step over it. So I'm just thankful to, to be able to do what I love and go forward, get back in the ring, and, and do some other things. And, um, and uh Try to help some other people out too. With with the fight that you're going through and hearing in your voice and what you were saying about this fight that you've been going through the next few months, it seems like this fight is because you want to get back into the ring. You want to go back into doing what you love, uh, which I admire and, and you definitely have my respect for sure. What more do you want to do in the world of wrestling? Um, you know, it's- there's always something to do in our business. Our business is ever evolving and ever changing. Um, you know, I have a lot to still contribute with a lot of the younger talent, uh, just in simple things, um, maybe ring poise, uh, out of the ring etiquette and poise, uh, handling yourself as a brand. I mean, these kids are fantastic on social media with the Instagram and the tweeting and the Facebooking and the Snapchatting. And, uh, and all that stuff. I mean, they're great at that. But, you know, there's also ways to, to carry yourself as a star. I mean, that's not um, thinking of yourself as a star. Being a WWE superstar, being a real star is about giving. And I think there's a few of the guys that get that. But your fans are constantly, whenever you see them, you're on point. You have to give to them. Because, you know, the access, the interaction they have with you, that's how you build that lifelong relationship with people being a fan of you. They may not like the things that your character goes through, but your influence on them of what a, of what a true WWE superstar is with respect to the fans, the respect to the industry, respect for your fellow talent. A lot of times, younger talent gets too wrapped up into me, 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 I, 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 me, me, me. There is no I in team. This is a team. And I tell the young guys all the time, and Mark certainly say this, out of the billions of people on this planet, the 75 or 80 women between both brands uh, of superstars are the only people, the only product that really matters, which is WWE in this industry of sports entertainment. It's a small percentage of people on this planet. Now, there's nothing to take that and be arrogant for. There's nothing to take for granted. Actually, that's the position of... of of being thankful. Thankful to have the opportunity, thankful to have the guys you're working with, and thankful to perform to do something that you loved it since you were a kid. So to take that attitude with it could be gone tomorrow. So make the most out of every day today. Mm-hmm. And, and things little little anecdotes like that, little things like that that I bring to the table, I still have time to get. And to tell you the truth, I'm still having fun. You know, if I were, it, it would be different if I wasn't having fun anymore. Or, or, you know, I've done it all. This, that, you know, yes, I have done everything probably that the big show can do. There's not much for me to do personally other than to go out and have fun now. And I think for me, it's the best time of my career ever because now I can go out and have fun. I don't have any pressure. There's no, hey, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. We know what I'm capable of. We know what we need for me. And I can go out and have fun and interact with my fans. 